Before we get into the meat and potatoes on this video, I'm just going to walk past a very busy street because I want to show you guys how insane it is here right now in Miami during the week of Art Basel, which is a big art show that comes to Miami every year. This year they're celebrating 20 years that this thing's been coming to town. And for 20 years, every year it just seems to be getting crazier and crazier with the amount of traffic, the amount of people on the road here is unbelievable, guys. Like, you're gonna see behind me just cars and cars and cars. There's a line of cars back there waiting because the uh, light is red, but it is just nonstop. And right up ahead is the drawbridge that I showed you guys in an earlier video. Once that thing opens, forget it. It is like just gridlock around here. And I'm lucky I just live right up the street, so that's why I'm staying close to home because uh, it's just nuts trying to go anywhere. Basically need a helicopter to navigate through this madness. And there's a house for sale on the corner here we can take a look at real quick. Wow, check this out. They listed this house back in April for almost 4.5 million. Fast forward to today, they've cut almost a million bucks off the price and still no one has bought it. Insane. Well, here you go, guys. Cars as far as the eye can see up there. Now, if you want to know a good way to gauge when the economy is in trouble, here's one way that I think might be a sign. When 35% of millionaires say, uh, it's going to take a miracle for them to retire. What? Does that even sound remotely possible, guys? That millionaires could be in trouble and might not be able to retire? To me, as soon as I heard that, I thought, this sounds ridiculous. And the first thing, of course, I thought of is these people might be millionaires, but they probably live paycheck to paycheck just like other people who are totally broke because at the end of the day, doesn't really matter how much money you make, it largely depends on how much money you keep. But when you see headlines like this, I think it's pretty safe to say that a million dollars is not what it used to be, especially with high inflation. Now they did a survey of about 8,500 different millionaires where this information came from, and 58% of them said that they accept the fact that they'll have to keep working longer and 36% worry that retirement might not even be an option, which is just really staggering when you think about it. But like I said, I think a big part of this is just living too far beyond your means, right? Because this article goes on to say that the average American would need about 1.25 million to retire and live a comfortable lifestyle in retirement. Well, if these people are already millionaires, I'm guessing they probably already have that much money, if not more. So why are they not able to afford retirement? Well, I think it's because their expectations for how they want to live in retirement are probably just too high. You know, they have this millionaire lifestyle going on and in order to maintain that into retirement, they're going to need far more than 1.25 million, probably more like 5 million. And let's not forget that a lot of these millionaires are affected by the same overall forces that average Joes are too, because a lot of these people have 401k accounts. And right now the average 401k account is down 23%. So if you had a million bucks in your 401k, now you're down to about 800,000. And then you factor in inflation, making everything far more expensive than it was just a year ago. If you are at or near retirement right now, and this is your situation, this could be the death blow, making it much more difficult to retire when not only is your 401k balance down, but also everything that you need to buy in retirement is up. This is what I never understand either, guys, because all the standard retirement advice is always goes something like this. Oh, you, you don't need to have that, that much. You don't need to have a million dollars in retirement because you can tap into your home's equity. You can have life insurance. You can have all these different things. And on top of that, when you retire, you won't need as much money as when you were working because your lifestyle will slow down. As people get older, they spend less money. In what world, guys? In what fantasy world is that happening? I mean, yeah, you can say all you want that people spend less money in retirement. Yeah, maybe 50 years ago, before inflation was through the roof, before the median price home cost 400 grand, <laughs> before 
you know, a gallon of milk or a dozen eggs costs five bucks, you know, sure. Then you spend less in retirement. But the way things are going right now, at this very moment, I don't know who is going to be spending less in retirement than they do right now. Because the way I see it, everything's just getting more expensive. It's not getting cheaper. So tell me how the math works out that you're gonna be spending less in retirement than you are right now. Or if anybody who watches the channel is planning on retiring in the next couple years, let me know what is your plan to spend less money in retirement versus what you're spending right now. Now I know a lot of people say, I'm not gonna have a mortgage by the time I retire, so that's gonna help save me some money. And uh, also, I, I'm gonna cut back on a few other things. But if everything else that you buy is still going up in price and getting more expensive, whatever you end up saving from these cutbacks could end up still costing you the same in the end. So that's what I'm thinking here. So basically the advice that this article is giving millionaires and the average Joe is that you need to look at how much money you have saved and how much you think you're gonna need in retirement, blah, 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 in order to make the money last. And of course, this is going by the traditional, put all your money into the stock market and 401k accounts and just throw a Hail Mary and hope it's gonna be enough when retirement comes. And I honestly hate this plan. I've talked about that before on the channel. I think it's a horrible plan to uh, guarantee your retirement. But unfortunately, it's what most people do because it's all they know and it's all they've ever been taught. Let me know how this is all working out for you guys, if you're gonna be retiring soon, uh, if you're even gonna be able to retire anymore, let us all know in the comments. My gut feeling says you can't just print six trillion dollars and have all this government stimulus go into the economy and then think that after a couple of interest rate hikes by the Fed and uh, small decreases in mortgage rates is going to completely fix the economy overnight and inflation's just gonna go away and everything's gonna go back to normal in 2023. I mean, I don't know how anyone can think that right now. That sounds like living in Disneyland. I don't understand how anyone can think that that's where things are headed right now because that pretty much defies logic. And one thing I've learned throughout my lifetime is you have to go with your gut all the time, 100% of the time. And my gut says, this is far from over. We're just getting started with this recession and we have no clue where things are gonna go from here. But all we can do is pay attention, talk to each other, and try to figure it out together. And I don't wanna to spend too much time on this, but we did cover in depth in the last video about what the Fed might do and how that might impact the overall economy coming up in December here. However, uh, one thing that these guys are on the lookout for is your job, okay? Because about 263,000 new jobs were added in November. Hourly wages are up about 5.1% annually. And this is not good when it comes to uh, what the Fed wants to see to get inflation under control because a big part of it is also increasing unemployment. So you can sit there and say all you want that the job market's still really strong and everybody's still doing really well, but at the end of the day, all that is is even more incentive and more fuel for the Fed to continue with their interest rate hikes and they may end up going beyond the 5% federal funds rate that they're targeting if this persists and continues to be an ongoing issue that unemployment is not falling to the levels that they want to see. So you gotta keep that in mind as well. And if that happens, like we were just talking about with retirement and how this might affect the stock market and the housing market, it's gonna continue to bring prices down, guys. As interest rates go up, it just makes things worse when it comes to asset prices as well as valuations in your 401k and the stock market. So a lot of people are getting desperate already and you know praying that they reverse course real soon because people are bleeding out right now you know you can only bleed out so much before you're dead and here's something else to look at that might give us a clue of where we're headed the last time the federal funds rate reached five percent was guess when from june 2006 to july 2007. oh what happened back then i don't remember that that was a long time ago that was the beginning of the last financial crash, guys. So yet another reason I think that this whole thing is far from over, because if that's any indicator of where things are going, to me that just means 
we haven't seen the worst of it yet. Once again, that beautiful noise for the videos. I know you guys probably love hearing all that. I know I do. You gotta love the sound of bulldozers going down the streets that have multi-million dollar properties. I'm sure the neighbors here love it too. Now I wanna thank one of my viewers, William, for sending me this story about the new bill that has been introduced in the Senate by Senator Jeff Merkley, who is a Democratic senator from Oregon. It's called the End Hedge Fund Control of American Homes Act, which is a pretty fitting name for this bill because basically the idea here is to start banning institutional investment into single family homes in America. And that's something that a lot of people have been saying in the comments that they want to see happen. And a bill has been introduced. And remember guys, it's just a bill. This is not a law yet. And it may never become a law. But I wanted to bring this up because it's something that a lot of people who watch the channel seem to be hoping for. And it's something that's on the table now at least. But we all know how that goes. I mean, you have to have both sides of the aisle work together on things like this. And they're not too good at that. But the idea behind this bill is this. Everyone should have a safe and affordable place to call home. In every corner of the country, giant financial corporations are buying up housing and driving up both rents and home prices. They're pouring fuel on the fire of the affordable housing crisis that so many of our communities are facing, leaving working families behind. Well, let's take a look at how this got started and how this might end up working if this ends up passing. Now, if we go back to the last housing crash, there was a ton of foreclosure properties that came onto the market back then. And what happened was that's when these institutional investors and these hedge funds really started becoming big players in the real estate market and started buying in bulk a bunch of these distressed properties. And it's basically been going like that ever since and they keep continuing to raise the amount of acquisitions they have been making on a yearly basis. And one thing that has made this largely possible is the fact that the federal government has federally backed mortgages, just like we talked about a couple days ago. And it's to the point where it's so bad, where in 2021, hedge funds purchases for homes reached the highest level that we've seen in 16 years. In certain areas, it's much worse than others. And to put this into perspective, in 2021, about 43% of all home sales in Atlanta, Georgia, were from institutional investors. And in Phoenix, Arizona, that number was about 39%, which is extremely high. And just think about where the price of homes would be in these metros if these hedge funds were not part of the picture. You could easily imagine home prices being 100 to 150K less than where they are in these metros. But besides the fact that these guys are buying everything up, one thing that's also alarming about it is this because they have obligations to their investors in these hedge funds to provide big returns they have to go to drastic measures to be able to make this happen and so what they do is they have to impose high rental increases they have to increase the amount of fees that they charge on all their leases or different fees that they charge people to live in the properties like pet fees laundry fees utility fees whatever type of fee they can come up with essentially and they also delay home maintenance and repairs which diminishes the quality of life for the tenants living in these properties and the overall property value over time and check this out a study from 2018 on foreclosed properties in atlanta said that an institutional investor is 68 percent more likely to evict a tenant than a traditional mom and pop landlord so think about that for a minute and remember that stat anytime in the future when you're looking for a rental and look at who's the landlord guys are you renting from joe and susie down the street or are you renting from blackrock or blackstone or open door or someone else that could care less what happens to you okay so think about that however don't celebrate too soon because first of all we don't know if this bill is going to get passed. And second of all, the way that they go about handling this doesn't really sound that interesting or enticing to me because this is what they plan on doing. The bill is basically more of a discouragement than a ban, if you ask me, because basically what they're doing is they're establishing a $20,000 federal tax penalty for single family homes owned by a single company and its affiliates if they own over 100 homes. Oh, and then they say, that the $20,000 tax 
is supposed to get reinvested into first-time home buyers who need down payment assistance and that's where the money is supposed to go from this so here's a couple problems that I see with this thing first of all that's where the money is supposed to go right there's never a guarantee that we're gonna end up seeing that money go to the places it needs to go which is you know actually to help people buy homes but here's a couple things to think about we all know that corporations and big investors are gonna find loopholes to get out of this and find ways around it okay so the first one that's glaringly obvious to me is to just start a bunch of mini corporations that buy up 99 homes instead of 100 and now you're basically exempt from this tax that'd be the first way and the easiest way and probably the cheapest way for these conglomerates to continue purchasing homes and the other thing I look at is it's not actually a ban guys it's just basically a slap on the wrist for going against what the government wants them to do they can still purchase as many single-family homes as they want they're just gonna have to pay this twenty thousand dollar tax penalty and I'm not sure if it's one time or per year but then it also leaves you with the last problem of is this money going to go where it's supposed to and the final problem with it is even if it does go where it's supposed to you're basically robbing Peter to pay Paul that old adage you know because you're taking the money from the rich and giving it to the poor basically like Robin Hood and that's definitely not a free market system it's definitely government intervention and it's against what a lot of you guys say you want to see which is the opposite of what you want to see it's big time government intervention that's going to take its toll on the housing market in one way or another and I personally think this is just gonna make real estate more expensive guys just like I mentioned before because anytime you give any group of people money to buy something no matter who it is doesn't really matter who it is that is stimulus and it's a way to stimulate the housing market they're not removing the money from the housing market they're just taking it from someone and giving it to someone else so in the end I really feel like this whole thing is not going to do anything to really fix the root issue which is you know we need more affordable housing and what I mean by affordable housing I'm not talking about the projects I'm talking about regular homes that people can afford you know that regular average working people can afford to buy that's what we're talking about here so we need more of those and who prevents those from being built the government so once again they're getting involved in a situation and they probably will make it worse just like we talked about I wanted to give you guys all the details on that before you just jump for joy and think this is a great thing that this bill's being introduced because when you look at what they're actually planning on doing it doesn't seem like it's really going to help out all that much and I have an interesting story to tie in here from basically back to the beginning of this when we talked about retirement and you know 35 percent of millionaires saying it'll be a miracle if they can retire well I think here's a here's a perfect example of why you're seeing this guys and it's just like I said pretty much confirms my initial thoughts on it there was a story about this couple that each make hundred K per year so their household brings in two hundred thousand dollars a year well above the average household which is like what eighty ninety thousand dollars a year in the US so more than double what the average household makes per year and they owe a hundred thousand dollars on their home equity line of credit so they're massively in debt on their house probably upside down with it as well now they're writing into the news telling people about this because they're afraid now that they can never retire so these guys are the exact people who are basically complaining that well I'm a millionaire I make all this money but I can't retire and the craziest thing about this to me is apparently this husband and wife both grew up in poor families they didn't have money and so they know what it's like to be broke and you would think because I've been there too I know what it's like to be broke and to be here you know living with only a few dollars to my name I know what that feels like guys and I never want to go broke again and I would think that these people would feel like me like you already know how terrible it is to be broke and you would think that they would do anything they need to do to make sure that that never happens again but instead they make all this money and do exactly the opposite and 
live far beyond their means. And basically, since this is like one of those help me articles that people write into like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. And then, you know, they write a response in the post to try to tell these people what to do. And first of all, they said, congrats for admitting that you have a spending problem. And this is not a problem of income. It's a problem of spending and behavior. So you need to get that under control ASAP by visiting a financial planner and you're probably going to need a financial therapist too. <laughs> I mean, has America really become that stupid, guys? I mean, do people that make 200 k a year need to have a financial therapist to tell you what's okay to spend money on and what's not okay to spend money on? You need somebody like that to put you in check. Like, hey, you're actually spending too much every month. It's all just basic math that we all learned in first grade, you know? That's all this all comes down to. So I don't understand what's so hard about it. And people that make this kind of money should be doing better than everyone else and should have that million bucks socked away already for retirement. So I thought this was just very interesting and is a true sign of the times of where things are at with everybody. Because to be honest, if you make that kind of money and you still feel like you're drowning financially, you're helpless, guys. I mean, hopefully these people get out of that and they learn from their mistakes. But, you know, getting out of a $100,000 home equity line of credit is going to be difficult, especially with how high interest rates are right now. And the good thing that they have on their side is they make a lot of money. And hopefully they can get out of it and start hiring their financial coach and their therapist to guide them spiritually on what to do next. Or they could just watch this channel for free and... Uh, probably learn more than they're going to learn from their therapist. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a guy walking through rich neighborhoods in a tank top. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the bell notification down below. YouTube will alert you every time I put out a new upload. And if you don't want to wait, check out my next video on the screen right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.